Welcome to the Leprosy course. My name is Juanita Prieto and I work at the Vanderbilt Institute for Global Health. Today, we'll be learning about leprosy. By the end of this presentation, you will be able to describe the characteristics and epidemiology of the disease, understand the clinical course and treatment, and apply prevention and management strategies, as well as identifying the global efforts that has been done until now. Leprosy, also called Hansen's disease, is a chronic infectious disease caused by the Mycobacterium lepra. This Mycobacterium lepra is an acid-fast, rod-shaped bacilli. bacilli. The disease mainly affects the skin, the peripheral nerves, the mucosa of the upper respiratory tract, and the eyes. Leprosy is curable, and treatment in the early stages can prevent disability. Leprosy is also called Hansen disease is the oldest recorded infection and discovered by Dr. Gerard Hansen in, 19, in 1873. Unfortunately, leprosy is still a stigmatized disease. It's endemic in some developing countries. Mycobacterium lepra is an acid-fast, rod-shaped bacilli. It is an obligate intracellular organism that preferentially prof proliferates in tissues with cooler temperatures. The organism exhibits the longest reproduction time among all bacteria, requiring 13 days to replicate. Typically, the granuloma appears at the inoculation site up to, th up to six months after infection has been produced. The incubation period, the time between becoming infected and developing symptoms, ranges from nine months to 20 years. The infectious period, the time during which an infected person can infect others, will last for as long as the person has untreated disease. However, the person is no longer infectious soon after starting the treatment, with a combination of two or three medicines that is called a multidrug therapy. We will talk about this later. The Schwann cells are a major target for infection by the mycobacterium lepra, leading to injury of the nerve, demyelination, and consequent disability. Binding of the mycobacterium lepra to the Schwann cells induces demyelination and loss of axonal conductance. After the Schwann cell is being infected, it crosses the blood nerve barrier. There's two pathways of bacterial dissemination. The first one is the direct differentiation, where the cell infects the smooth muscles and then in the skeletal, infected skeletal mu muscle is reproducing. The second one is via macrophages. Recruit, recruitment and bacterial transfer is what happens first. Then the granuloma starts to form, and then the release of infected macrophages to disseminate the disease. It is not known exactly how Hansen disease spreads between people. Two exit routes of the, lep of the leprobacteria has been described, at the skin and the mucosa, the nasal mucosa. Lepromatous cases show large numbers of organisms deep in the dermis, but whether they reach the skin surface in sufficient number is doubtful. The entry road of the mycobacterium to the human body is also not definitely known. The skin and the upper respiratory tract are most likely. However, recent, recent research increasingly favors the respiratory route. You cannot get leprosy from a casual contact with a person. You need extended and prolonged contact. Leprosy is also not passed in a vertical manner. That means from a mother to her unborn baby. And it's also not spread to, through sexual contact. Humans are the major host and reservoir. Around 15% of wild armadillos are naturally infected with the mycobacterium. However, the risk is very low, and most people that come into contact with one of these animals are unlikely to get the disease. For general health reasons, avoid contact with armadillos whenever possible. If you had contact with one of them and are worried about getting leprosy, talk to your healthcare provider. The classification of lepra comes in through three, three criteria, clinical, histopathological, and immunological. We have identified in those three criteria five forms of leprosy. Tuberculoid leprosy, borderline tuberculoid, mirrored borderline, and borderline lepromatose and lepromatose leprosy. Patients are divided into two groups for therapeutic purposes. The palsy bacillary includes tuberculoid leprosy and borderline tuberculoid. It includes less than five lesions. And the multivacillary 
form, which includes mid borderline leprosy and lepromatous polar leprosy. The clinical manifestations of tuberculoid or palsy basilary leprosy are mainly cutaneous and neurologic. The skin lesions are circular, ovoid, and serpiginous, sharply demarcated and often hypopigmented. They may have elevated erymatose borders and dry scaly appearance. In the center of this lesion is complete anesthesia area. Lesions are commonly found on the extensor surfaces of the limbs, so legs and arms, face or buttocks. Cutaneous nerves may be palpably enlarged and visible. The clinical manifestations of lepromatous leprosy are cutaneous, ocular, and neurologic. Skin changes are more extensive than in the tubercular form. Patients may show extensive bilaterally symmetric non-anesthetic skin lesions with macules, nodules, plaques, or papules. Bullous or ulcerated lesions may also be seen. Neurologic changes include diffuse hypostasia, but functioning is somewhat preserved until late in the disease course. Ocular manifestations of leprosy are very diverse, but the most common findings are reduced coronal sensation, a vascular keratitis, and interstitial keratitis. Beating or opaque coronal nerves and conjunctival and or episclero hyperemia is very common, and the loss of eyebrows as well. The table shows more in detail the clinical features of the different subtypes of leprosy that we have discussed so far. Please review this thoroughly after a presentation. Now on diagnosis, histological findings are usually for, from a skin biopsy and vary based on the type of leprosy. Tuberculoid leprosy is characterized by non-caseating granulomas, destruction of the dermal nerves and loss of sweat glands and hair follicles are present. Lepromatous leprosy demonstrates a normal epidermis, subepidermal granulomas, particularly around blood vessels, nerves, and skin appendage. Foam cells and many intracellular acid fat bacilli are also present. This slide is showing a lepromatous leprosy cluster of acid fat bacilli in histocytes and infiltrating nerves. So foam cells are a key finding in diagnosing lepra. Foam cells are macrophages that have been ingested or phagocytized, a phagocytized mycobacterium lepra, but are unable to digest the organism, who in turn multiply and use the macrophage as a method of transport throughout the body. This is how the bacteria cause the multiple lesions that may appear in all parts of the body in the multivascular form. The treatment uses three drug regimen comprising of rimfampicin, dapsone, and clof clofazimine. It is recommended for all leprosy patients. With, a duration, with duration of treatment lasting for six months for palsy basilary leprosy and 12 months for multi basilary leprosy. The potential advantage of using the same three drugs for both forms of the disease is simplification of treatment. For patients who are resistant to rimfampicin, the two of the following drugs are recommended. Claritromycin, minocycline, or aquinolone, plus clofazimine daily for six months. Followed by clofazimine plus one of the second line drugs daily for an additional 18 months. For adults and children age, above, uh, age two and above, who are in regular contact with leprosy patients, the guidelines recommend the use of single dose of rimfampicin. So how we prevent this disease? Adequate identification is a key component in the prevention of leprosy. Exclusion of leprosy patients from workplaces and school until the infection disease physician has clear diagnosis is extremely important to control this um, transmission. Control is best achieved by the rapid elimination of infectivity in people with leprosy using multidrug therapy. Leprosy is a highly stigmatized condition, sadly, but so the education to the community is key in the prevention and control of it. Because close and prolonged contact is required for transmission, of, for transmission travelers to areas where leprosy is present have a very low risk of contracting the disease. So who is at risk? 
those living in endemic areas with poor conditions such, such as inadequate bedding, contaminated water, and insufficient diet, or other diseases that are compromising the immune the immune function are at the highest risk of, ac of acquiring leprosy infection. The infection is very rare in the U.S., and 94% of the world population is actually immune to it. So what is the global response now? In 2016, the World Health Organization launched it, its global leprosy strategy. This strategy is focused on reinvigorate efforts for leprosy control. It is targeted by the targets are zero disability among new pediatric patients, a grade two disability rate of less than one case per one million, and zero countries with legislation allowing discrimination of basis of leprosy. Again, all these three targets have like education in common. The global leprosy strategy is a structure around following three core pillars. The first one, is to strengthen government ownership, coordination, and partnership. The second one is to stop leprosy and its complications. And the third one is to stop discrimination and promote inclusion. What is the geographical distribution? Leprosy is asymmetrically distributed globally, with the greatest incidence and prevalence in the developing world. Globally, the incidence has fallen by 70% and the prevalence has fallen by 90% since 2000, thanks to the aggressive eradication efforts with the multiple treatment regimens. Time for questions. So which are reservoirs for leprosy? A and C. If you chose that, you're correct. So um, humans and armadillos are both reservoirs for leprosy. Second, another name for leprosy is Hansen disease. So Dr. Hansen was the one who discovered leprosy in 1873. Which are, through, are true about the transmission of leprosy? Both B and C. Although we don't know entirely how the transmission pathway works, it is known that the prolonged exposure to leprosy is needed, hence it's not easily spread between humans. Additionally, leprosy is not spread through vertical transmission uh, or sexual transmission. So to conclude our presentation, this is our, our takeaway. Leprosy is a chronic disease caused by a bacilli mycobacterium lepra. The average time of incubation is five years. Symptoms may occur within one year, but it can also take as long as 20 years or more to appear. It mainly affects the skin, the peripheral nerves, the mucosa of the upper respiratory tract, and also the eyes. Leprosy is a curable disease with multidrug therapy and prevention programs. It is transmitted via droplets from the nose and mouth during close and frequent contact with untreated cases. Untreated leprosy can cause a progressive and permanent damage to the skin, nerve, limbs, and eyes, leading to uh, disability. So it's time for a clinical case. A 56-year-old male presents to a dermatology clinic, complained of enlarging nodular lesions on both ears. Upon questioning, he reveals another dermal lesion, a small hypopigmented patch on his left thigh. He also states that he just moved to Nashville from Brazil four months ago. So you have two questions. What will be your suspected diagnosis and how will you proceed?